Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Is it working? <laughs> Welcome to North and Regional. I don't know everybody here today, but however, we have one thing in common, don't we? We're all here to worship God. We're all here to commune with each other. And we're actually brothers and sisters in Christ, aren't we? Amen. A few housekeeping um, <laughs> comments I've got, and that is there's some exits. Now, I feel like I'm on an aeroplane now. The exits are here and here. Uh, this is the third one. Our third one over here, all right? And the toilets are out through the double doors in the back there. Not far away. Um, I've got a couple of questions to ask you this morning to make sure you're awake. I can see Don's awake over there. Morning, Don. Um, who was out of bed at 7 a.m.? This is an easy one. Come on. All right. Who was out of bed at 6 a.m.? A few more. Who was out of bed at 5 a.m. this morning? Norm. Norm was out of bed at 5 a.m. this morning. Well, I suggest maybe you drink this before you go to bed next time and you'll be all right. Um, it's great to see such a gathering from all the northern churches and I, I know that we're going to have a few more coming in in the next few minutes, so make sure you've got your seats. But um, who is here from Kai Tire? Kai Tire. You guys are celebrities lately, aren't you? Haven't you been on national TV? You're like the Kardashians of the north, is that right? That'd be Kai Tire. I've seen you on, um, is it Hope? Hope TV? Yeah, you are. You're celebrities now. Who's here from Takao? Oh, come on, Where, where's Takao? Over there. Right, my father was born near Takao. My father was born in Hohora, so I guess I'm, I'm part from your church as well. Mm. All right, so then we've got Tiki Panga, Wongrei, Furunaki. Is there anyone here from Furunaki Church? Not yet, they're probably on their way. Um, this morning, I want you to turn and look into the eyes of your partner. This is another exercise. Turn and look deeply into the eyes of your partner. So I heard on the radio this week that statistically this is the person most likely to kill you. <laughs> so, um, just a little warning for you to start the day. <laughs> Look, thank you all for bringing food to the shared lunch. I'm sure you've got that all organised and that needs to go across the road to the kitchen over there. Is this still working? Yep. Um, I'm, I'm trusting that you've bought food that fits our health message to share with your brothers and sisters. Um, if you locate anything on the table that doesn't fit within our health message, please see myself uh, or Norm or Grant Pram and we'll look into that and take care of that for you. And um, finally, I'd like to welcome Eddie, Ben and Shane from Auckland. It's great to have the conference guys up here and um, we've been blessed with a very settled and great team of guys leading us, haven't we? And now I'd ask you if you're able to kneel in prayer. Father in heaven, this morning as we kneel before you, Lord, we recognise we are part of a very large organisation. And today around the world, Lord, we bow before you and recognise you as our God and our King, our Maker, our Counsellor, Lord, and our Guide. Lord, how privileged we are to worship in freedom this morning before you, to meet with each other and share um, our load, Lord, our cares and our worries with you, Father, for you to take them from our shoulders, Lord and for you to wear this worry and care and stress for us. Lord, we ask for forgiveness for the things that separate us from you. We ask that we can be connected to you again this day, Lord. We ask for blessing on our parents. We ask for blessing on our children. We ask, Lord, that this morning and today we will draw nigh to you and we will feel your presence, Lord, in the form of the Holy Spirit as we worship you again, Lord. Bless those men who will speak to us today, Father. We pray that we'll find attention and that we'll listen to the words that are spoken to us today and adjust our lives accordingly to draw closer to you. Father, we ask for your blessing, your forgiveness and your love this morning. We ask safety as we travelled here this morning and as we travel home again this evening, Lord. Bless us, care for us, love us today, we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Now we've got a few singers to come forward. We're going to see our first song of the day, which has come now as a time to worship.
Across the street from the Vibrant Life Medical and Wellness Clinic is another healthcare center. Hepsiba works at the center across the street, but she often visits Vibrant Life and refers some patients there. It's in this Adventist Health Center that she herself found hope and healing. At Vibrant Life, Hepsiba and members of her family received natural treatments that improved their health in ways they did not think was possible. I could literally feel that pain relieving out of me. And it was a great experience. Since then, I've just been visiting them very frequently. And uh, my mother-in-law was, was also a diabetic patient. So for almost um, close to uh, eight, nine years, we haven't seen her sugar levels come down more uh, lesser than uh, 390. We've tried all treatments and uh, that hasn't brought the sugar levels down. But after three months of counseling, a special diet and some medication, this picture changed dramatically. Last month, her sugar levels were 97, which was unbelievable for us. Today, many people come to the Vibrant Life Medical and Wellness Clinic because of Hepsiba's enthusiastic referral. Every day, at least two patients have been sending in here referring. This Adventist Center offers natural treatment solutions for chronic diseases like diabetes, hypertension, and obesity. Doctors Narendra and Daisy Rao teach their patients about the impacts of lifestyle choices on their health. The staff puts on health expos coupled with screenings and counseling to raise awareness of relevant topics for this community. Patients of all classes are treated here, from the poor and needy to orphans next door, to the wealthy who are looking for an alternative to the side effects of long-term medication. There is a great need for um, lifestyle interventions in our country because we have at present nearly 7 million people with diabetes and about 30 million with heart disease and another 30 million who are obese. Vibrant Life doctors provide affordable services. The goal is to attract patients at a price point that is competitive yet fosters sustainability so this small mission clinic can continue to grow. And so we have proposed a bigger center which will include all kind of uh, services including diagnostics, nutrition counseling, health food store and restaurant, the exercise facility, a swimming pool and above all a training center. We have no training center in India to train our uh, gospel workers in medical missionary work. So we want this center to be a center of influence where we can help our workers to reach out to the community to help evangelism. Your support of Global Mission helps Vibrant Life and other Life Hope Centers. Please pray for the health ministry work in this large metropolis. Pray that this clinic can become a model for many more in the vast country of India. to see the impact of our offerings on mission. Mm -hmm. We ask the deacons to come forward now and lift this morning's offering. Thanks.
thank you so much, Lord. We're able to give back to you, Lord, and we're able to see the results, Lord, of the mission around the world. Thank you so much for your blessings, Lord, this morning, and the ability to give. In your name, Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. For those of you, and happy Sabbath, thank you, Lucy. Yeah, uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Adrian Webster. I get to pastor the uh, Whangarei congregation and very glad to be hosting you today for our 2018 Northland Regional. Are you glad to be here? Amen. All right, fantastic, fantastic. For our lesson study uh, this morning, I realize we we're quite a large group, so I don't know how well the commenting and interaction will work. We've got a, I've got a few interviews lined up with a few people. Um, is Lee Clark here yet? I might have missed him when he came in. Okay, apparently one of my interviews is not here yet. <laughs> so uh, what we're going to be talking about today in our lesson study time, of course, as you know, if you've had a look at your uh, lesson study pamphlet, you know that we're talking about the Sabbath, aren't we? Particularly the Sabbath in the last days. And uh, very, a very important, very... Uh, a topic that's very dear to us as Seventh-day Adventists, isn't it? So let's bow our heads for a word of prayer, and then we will jump into the study of this week's lesson. Father in heaven, we thank you so much that you have given us this time to be refreshed, to rest. Um, just a powerful verse we find in Exodus 31, verse 17, that on the Sabbath day, I love the way it puts it, Lord, that you rested and were refreshed. The God who needs nothing being refreshed by his fellowship with human beings. It's a, it's a marvelous thought. And so we thank you, Lord, for this privilege and uh, bless us now as we study your word in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, question for you and just uh, put up your hands where you are or, or shout it out. It's not a long answer. What do you personally love the most about the Sabbath day? Rest. Rest? Are you talking about physical rest? Okay, all right. What else? What do you love about Sabbath? Study. Study. Thank you, Bryce. Um, Jonathan? Being with people that adore Jesus. Being with people that adore Jesus. I like that. That's fantastic, absolutely. Anything else? What do you love about Sabbath experience? Lucy? Say that again? And so translate that for me? Family unity. Family unity. Yeah, very close to what Jonathan was saying, right? Being connected with people who, are, who adore Jesus. Absolutely. Yes, we stand together, don't we? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yes? Remind me of the day of God's people who come together and study His Word. All right, so, so it's a little foretaste today of what we've got waiting for us in the future, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, a, it's like, the, uh, it's like heaven brought forward in time. Right? Yes. Anything else? What's Pastor Eddie's favorite thing about Sabbath? Family. family. Do you get to spend time with your family on Sabbath, Pastor? <laughs> opportunity to serve him. An opportunity to serve him? What do you mean? <laughs> Sabbath is a time when we do nothing, isn't it? Oh, it's good for us to acknowledge that, isn't it? Yeah, there's a, whole, there's a whole bunch of us who are not here right now to enjoy adult Sabbath school time because of what? Because they're serving Absolutely. our youngest, right? Investing in them. Absolutely. I was teasing you a little bit about uh, doing nothing on Sabbath, right? Because actually I, think, I don't think that was quite the intent that God had for Sabbath. Right. What else? What else do you love about Sabbath? The worship experience. Yeah. Do any of you look forward to coming to church? Yes. Now, be honest. Those of you who are far away, when you thought of the regional being in Whangarei this year, that did not that did not sit well with a Sabbath morning start, did it? I, I think uh, David said, "Was it Norm who was up at five in the morning? Were you lying about that, Norm?" No? <laughs> yeah, some of you drove very far to be here this morning, right? We're glad to have you with us, absolutely. Anything else about Sabbath? What do you love? What do you love? The thing is, it starts 
on Friday night, which is even better still. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Okay. <laughs> the, the early start to the Sabbath, right? Yes. Yeah, Friday night. But let's be honest, in winter, that makes Fridays chaotic, doesn't it? A little bit. Yeah, yeah a little especially if you've got five children like we do. It's a challenge, isn't it? But there's something special about it, isn't it? You know, Friday night when sunset comes, it's like the whole atmosphere changes. If you do have secular TV in your home, secular TV goes off and the, the rat race stops and, and uh, the whole atmosphere is completely different, right? So it's, a, it's, a, it's an awesome experience. Yeah. Here's a question for you. How many of you, when Sabbath comes, the moment you start, maybe on a Friday night, the moment that atmosphere changes and you, your brain and your body senses that you've gone into slow down mode, how many of you, be honest now, struggle to stay awake for the Sabbath hours? <laughs> no, a lot of us are not being honest. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it, that's actually when you realize actually what a toll the week has taken on you, right? It's almost like the rat race of life is an artificial stimulant. It's like drinking lots of coffee or taking... Uh, you know, some kind of stimulant drug or something. And suddenly, when you step into the Sabbath hours, and, and by law, you know, by divine law, everything stops and changes, like your whole body, everything about you goes, ooh. Yeah. I think God was very wise making Sabbath start on Friday night. Because I, think, I don't think the Sabbath morning would have the same kind of impact that it would have if we had rushed all the way through the night you know, doing what we do on every other night and then woken up on a Sabbath morning to all of a sudden go to church and change gears. So Friday night is that time where you just, the body and everything around you takes a, takes a deep breath, a sigh of relief, isn't it? All right, thank you for that. Um, Vaneva, can you come join me up here? So we are, um, we are talking today, of course, about not only the positive elements of Sabbath, but sometimes the Sabbath is a test, isn't it? And we know that, um, just checking this one, is this one on? Yes, there we go. We know that uh, in the last days it becomes especially that because of what Bible prophecy tells us. And um, so I've invited a few people to come and tell us a little bit about what it was like when they became a Sabbath keeper. Did it cost them something? Was it a test? Was it a trial? Of course, we know it's a blessing, but often with those blessings come hard decisions and uh, difficult moments and periods of life. There's Lee. Good to have you with us, Lee. Come join us. Sit up front here. You're up next. <laughs> but anyway, so tell us, uh, how long ago did you discover uh, Sabbath Fellowship? Um, I was brought up in a, a God-fearing Adventist family. Grew up in, as a child, learned all those things that you do as a child through with um, Adventist parents. Um, so privileged, right? So That's really privilege. privileged, yep. yeah. Good foundation. Great foundation. Um, however, as time went on, as you grow older, you tend to find, make your own decisions. And um, I married uh, someone who was not of the faith. And so the focus for us was all about ourselves and family. As the children came along, it became harder for me to um, not to keep those Sabbath practices, especially about um, the Friday night. Although it, you know, it was in your mind, it was part of your DNA and, and your natural being, um, it was really a struggle, it was a challenge um, because the, the focus shifted, I believe from something else, from God to ourselves and our family. And it was that was the focus. And I couldn't go to church. My reason, because my family wouldn't be coming with me. So that was my excuse at that time. And I didn't go to church for a very long time um, through the times that well, we had our family, young children growing up. But one day, it just hits you. you just, I just woke up. And it would have been about nine years ago where I woke up one Sabbath and decided, no, this is the day that I'm going to church. All right. And I made that decision. It wasn't very easy. Um, my family weren't very happy. 
because normally it's Saturday mornings, we're off to sports and my girls play basketball, they're international players now, and that was the groundwork for them. But I decided, no, I'm going to church because I want to be there. And when you hit a very fast moving, busy life, that's all I wanted at that time, and that's what appealed for me. So, in terms of that period where you, where, where you, as you say, you were aware, you knew, you knew about Sabbath, you knew you should be worshiping yeah. the Lord, but you weren't. Yeah. What, what was that like for you? Was, oh. was every week was it a bit of a? It was the conscience pricking you, or did it get to a place where you just didn't even really? No, um, our God is an amazing God. He knows exactly just how far you can go. And this protect no word of a lie, people. I woke up Sabbath morning saying to myself, I'm off to church. I'm going to church. And um, turned over to my husband and said, um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to church. Unfortunately, he knew what that meant. <laughs> uh, well, fortunately for me, he knew what that meant. And the commitment was certainly part of that. And I've never looked back since. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the, the, the thought processes, maybe even you could call it the, the self-justifications, the mm. things we tell ourselves mm. to mm. make it okay to, to skip out on what we know we're called to. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I always, and, I, and as I've come through that, I've been able to, well the Lord has been able to make me aware of the talents that he gave me, the gifts that I've been blessed with. Now, when I wasn't going to church, those things were not used at all. In fact, the, the, you know, when they say, they, he takes it away from you? Well, he certainly did. I didn't play piano, I didn't sing, although I had all those gifts, natural talents. I never used them. And it wasn't until I went back, um, that awareness of going to church, I have to say, I sat in the back of the church for the first three Sabbaths and just bawled, cried and cried and cried, knowing that this is where I needed to be, where I, the right place for me. Like home. Yeah. And the tears were of joy, of course. It wasn't one of, and people would walk past and they'd be going, are you okay? Are you all right? I'm going, oh, it's, it's okay. The tears of joy, the tears of joy. And it was amazing to see that God, through all that, was right there with me. You know, and I was able to sit quite comfortably, eventually moving to the front, then over to the side, onto the piano, and then teaching and singing, and yeah. Gradually, so, slowly, he brought me back out. I'm hearing you say that for all you thought you were gaining by abandoning the Sabbath, yeah. you're richer for having Absolutely. rediscovered the Sabbath Absolutely. coming back. Absolutely. God is good, isn't he? Amen. He's patient with us, isn't he? Amen. Now, there's also something very interesting in your local church. You have a great team who are yes. involved in the community, and you've got some interesting things happening with very young people. In the yeah. Um, I, uh, growing up in the Adventist church, we had um, opportunities to, to mingle with other children from the neighbourhood, and we'd take them along. As an adult now, I get to experience that same thing that we had when we were kids. Up in Kaitaia, for those of you that don't know, our street begins with, um, we have a, uh, Bonnets Road is well known for the gangs that live down our street. You will have Mungle Mob, you'll have Black Power, you'll have, um, what's that, Tribesmen, all living down our street. Now our children who live down that street are from those homes, various degrees, but they are from those homes. It started off with a kids' club. They used to come Tuesday afternoons, 3.30, every week we have a kids' club. They came and they started calling it Tuesday Church. And so I'd say to them, and the others who would be working with, with us, who is here, Brian over there, Gary over here, um, who have a lot of time with the kids, um, we said to them, well, actually this isn't church. Come on Saturday, come on Sabbath, and you'll see, you'll experience church. Really? This is a church? I said, no, it isn't what we do, you know, activities that we have. But come on church, at church on Sabbath, and you'll see what church is about. So now they come, and they've been coming for the last year or so. 
they actually came with me today. They wanted yeah, to come. They'll be over there. They'll, they'll be over there. Over. There's nine of them. So if you see them around, um, the young kids straight off the street, you're, you're easy enough to identify them. And um, they're here because they wanted to come. Amen. Five o'clock this morning, they were awake. Amazing. Awesome. So there you go. That's that, that's the that's the blessing of uh, of church ministry into the community, right? And now the opportunity to introduce another generation to the blessing that you grew up with and which you rediscovered, right? Amen. Vaneva, thank you for sharing with us. Now we've got, uh, in contrast to Vaneva, we've got um, Jordan and Mani Paula. If you'll come join me. Now they they they've just stepped out of the uh, youth class across the road there to come and join us. So. I'm going to jump straight in with them. Um, Jordan, you've got uh, a story to tell us with Money Paula. Yes. We just come over from the youth department, and uh, they're full of life, as you guys are here. Thank you. <laughs> you are. Um, but uh, this is my friend, Money Paula, and um, you know I've got to know her recently, uh, the last short while. But... Um, just as we start off, Monty Paula, she does has a story of her powerful experience of how she has been tested and tried in her newfound faith, and um, she's standing faithful to God, so we're going to share that with you. So Monty Paula, just start off, how old are you, and uh, what do you like to do? I'm 14 years old, and I like I have a passion for sports. Yeah, she likes sports. She's actually really good at uh, basketball. When we have like youth programs, she uh, she gives me a run for my money, <laughs> makes me uh, work up a sweat. She's very good. Um, now, Molly Paula, how long have you been a uh, Christian, and uh, how long have you been worshiping with the Seventh Adventist Church? I was born and raised as a Christian, and I've been worshiping with the Day Church for about a year now. Mm. Wow. Yeah, she's a, a new member, uh, and we're so glad for her to be a part of our youth team there. Amen. She's a huge blessing. Now, with uh, worshiping with the Samnamas Church for the last year, how and maybe what have you learned, and how has this impacted, and have you had to make any changes in your life? Yeah. I've learned that Saturday is the true Sabbath of mm. the Lord, and that He only blessed that day in the Mm, yeah. So she's uh, made some changes in where she was formerly attending church on another day, and now she's had to adjust her life schedule a little bit. Now, in her school, she's uh, very uh, coveted in, by the sports teams. Everybody wants her on her team, from what I understand. And she um, has had some pressures recently to join the netball team. Now, being on the netball team, and I find it actually a little bit of a frustration in my morning routine coming to church, that on a certain street I come to town, but when it's netball Sabbath, you might say, the streets are packed on certain sides of town, and it's just, it's really hard to, to get to church, and I have to come a different way. So being on the netball team requires you to play on Saturday. So, um, have you met any resistance in your new faith in going to school and through the sports teams? Yes. Yes, you have, yeah. Um, so they asked you to join the netball team. Um, uh, what did you? What would you say? How would you participate? Uh, I said I would only go to the practices, which was on Wednesdays and Friday. But I had to leave early on Friday before the sunset. Before the sunset. So she came up right up front. She said, "This is where I stand. I can go only during the week, and uh, I'll have to leave early on Fridays." <coughs> now. Um, have they tempted you at school to ignore your newfound faith? Yeah, the coach offered me, she said she would offer me a free uniform if I would join, like, play for the team. And, yeah. Wow, I was trying to sweeten the deal. <laughs> You're gonna have, you don't even have to pay for your uniform. So, did you receive the uniform? Yeah, but I returned it and said from the beginning that I wouldn't play. <laughs> no, she was, uh, time and time again, she's being firm and said, no, I can't do this. So, did you show up to the games when the, when the Sabbath game came along? No. No, you didn't. Now, what was the coach's response the next day at school? They say, if I didn't show up to any of the games, I wouldn't be able to participate in the games or the practices for the rest of the season. Now, how did that make you feel? I didn't really care. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is what she had already stated from the very beginning. It, didn't, it wasn't a, a loss to her anyways. Um, now, 
uh, at least in my line of work, I have met many people that um, this, some of these new truths that you have been learning and I've learned uh, through the Bible, sometimes it requires us to make decisions between work and employment and things, and school even, um, to be faithful to the Lord. And my question for you today, Monty Paul, is if you were to give uh, one word of advice to someone that is struggling with their faith and choosing, uh, should we follow man or should we follow God, what would you say to them? It's worth following Jesus than following me. Amen. And I think this is powerful. Um, Monty Paul has shared this story, and this is just a month ago. Like, this story is not over. Where she's still experiencing these pressures at school, and we need to be praying for Monty Paul as she is uh, making a stand for God. Now, this isn't some huge uh, life changing victory where she won a million dollars as a result of making this decision. But she is still in the grind, and, uh, and she, the Lord is, is blessing her. She's giving her faith to, to stay to the task and to, to put God first, even amongst these pressures. So I just praise the Lord for Monty Paul and her witness, and I just wanted to share that with you this morning. Amen. Thank you, Jordan and Monty Paul. Oh, I love that story. It's, um, Amen. How many of you... How many of you how many of you grew up in a Seventh-day Adventist home? Okay. How many of you, um, how many of you ha have never departed from the Sabbath-keeping experience that were born into a Seventh-day Adventist home? All right, far fewer hands. <laughs> how many of you came back after departing? Well, here you are, aren't you? Um, but yeah, you know, I think my other question for you is, how many of you had to give something up? To follow the Lord's Sabbath. Anybody? Might have been a job, might have been a cost to your family life or something like that. There, there is, you know, as Jesus said, count the cost, right? When he was talking about discipleship, he said, count the cost. There is a cost. At times, there is a very real cost. And I love that story that Mani Paula just shared with us because when Jordan asked her, you know, how did you feel about that, what did she say? Now, I don't think that's because she didn't care about playing. I would like to think that that's because she realized the value of what she was gaining. Does that make sense? You know, my son uh, has, has a hard time comprehending time and the value of money. He's, he's eight. I'm not quite sure whether he's supposed to comprehend that by now. But he tried to make a deal with me last night because we sent him to bed early because of some mischief. And he said, no, 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 I've got a better, I've got a better punishment. No TV for two years. <laughs> Now, I think that's a great deal. <laughs> but you know what I mean? There's no, he doesn't understand what, he, what that duration of time is. He's got no clue. Okay? And, and, and same with money. I think if I gave my son a handful of $1 coins, you know, four or five of them, or a $5 note or a $10 note, he'd probably want the coins. They're heavier. There's apparently more of them. All right? And I think that's, that's kind of how we have to evaluate the cost of discipleship. God's asking us to turn over a handful of coins so that he can give us the big notes. But sometimes we are stuck on our handful of coins and we think it's such an incredible sacrifice to have to open our hands and give away these coins when he's offering us something that's even beyond our comprehension to, uh, to understand, right? All right. There is a great verse in, uh, in Ezekiel. You know the verse well, probably, if you've studied the lesson. As a Seventh-day Adventist of numerous years, you've probably read this a few times. Ezekiel chapter 20, and I'm going to read you verse 12. It says here, I gave them my Sabbath days of rest as a sign between them and me. It was to remind them that I am the Lord who had set them apart to be holy. What does that mean? Fancy word, to be sanctified. Yes, more formal translations use that word as well. But what does that mean? <laughs> Special? What else? What does it mean to be set apart or to be sanctified? What, what's God saying? I am the God who does what for you? Yeah, but I want to know what sanctifies means. <laughs> it's true, 
It's accurate, but what does it mean? Set apart. It is set apart, but what does that mean? Chosen by God. Sorry, over here somewhere. To place God in it. Yes. So I am the God who wants to live out my life in you. Is that a fair interpretation? Right? I am the God that sanctifies you. Yes, sanctification, by the way, fancy word, is another is part is one of the words we use to explain salvation. Right? It is a work that God does in us by grace, through faith. His indwelling spirit, the gift to you when you receive Jesus, when you're justified, forgiven, and reconciled. He doesn't just say, right, you're okay now. I'll go over here and you go your way. No, he says the whole point of reconciliation is that we will walk together. And that's that journey, right? So I am the God who walks with you. I am the God who talks with you. I am the God who lives out my life in you. I am the God that transforms you, changes you, redeems you. Pulls you up from the mud you're in, cleans you up, prepares you for heaven, imbues you with my character, fills you with my Holy Spirit, brings forth fruit in your life, etc., etc., etc. You get the point. The Sabbath is a... What's the word? A sign between who? God and I. God and the Sabbath keeper. Between me and you. Why? Because you and I are terribly forgetful. Anybody agree with that? I have many names for my wife because I sometimes forget her first name. Leah likes that. In that moment, right? We're forgetful. We, we just... We, it's, it's something about our fallenness. And so God says, here's what I'm going to do. Every seven days, I'm going to call you to rest. I'm going to call you to a change of your routine. I'm going to give you a new experience. And every seven days, you're going to remember my name. Every seven days, you're going to remember you cannot save yourself. Every seven days, you're going to remember that you are forgiven in the same way that you experience Sabbath by stopping Whatever you do in your strength, and you're going to rest. The Sabbath is going to be an object lesson every seventh day to remind you that you are saved by grace through faith. That it is the indwelling of the presence of Christ that changes and transforms you. That you will never, ever meet His holiness standard in your own strength by your own doing. You must be found in Christ, resting in Him. Every seventh day, you're going to stop. And you're going to remember. Lee, come join me up here. How many of you have met Lee before? Lee Clark. Lee, where are you? You've moved down to Whangarei recently, but you moved from further north. Where was that? Yeah, me and my family moved from far north to Tupou. All right. And uh, how long ago did you come down here, Lee? November. November last month. Yeah. All right. We've been blessed to have Lee uh, fellowship with us in uh, the Whangarei Seventh-day Adventist Church. And how long have you been baptized for now, Lee? I'm not baptized. Oh. We'll have to sort that out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't know that. All right. So, Lee, you are planning to be baptized soon. And uh, part of your experience and your journey with Christ has been to discover the Sabbath, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Now, uh, in... Uh, where you were living before you came down here, uh, what was that like for you? Tell us a little bit about the story. What brought you to Farm and A? Uh, I've had a colourful past. And I've been... Oh my God. Check, check. I think it's working. Hello? Hello? That one's good. <laughs> okay. You want to hear me? Let's keep it real close. All right. Touch your chin with it, then you'll be on. Okay. So I had a bit of a colourful past. Uh, of I was living up in Tako, and we had hard times. Me and my little family. And uh, how many of you are there? There's good question. Four of us. 
and um, three children. Three, and yeah, three children. My beautiful partner at the back there, Emma. And, Where is um, she? Let's just. Uh, there she is. Just trying to stay out of sight. <laughs> yeah, and um, I moved up there in a different frame of mind than what I am today. And uh, you were a businessman up there, weren't you? I was a businessman about three years ago. Yeah. Then I was. Um, well, what did you trade in? I was trading in what was my business? Yeah. Wood waste and pellets. Yeah. And um, then I moved on to a different type of business. Uh huh. More illegal business. Uh huh. Mm. <laughs> and um, yeah, that wasn't the best way for me and my family going forward. Okay. You found yourself with a housing problem, didn't you? Yes, definitely. Um, I see we hit hard times up north, trying to find a house for me and my family and um, full-time work. It was a big test of our faith, especially my faith, being new in, being new in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Because you'd walked away from your illegal sideline, you'd, yeah, you'd, definitely. you'd stepped away from that and suddenly uh, the money wasn't flowing? No, the money was definitely not flowing anymore. But you knew you couldn't hold on to Christ and hold on to that lifestyle? Yeah, I had, I had to... I had to make a choice. You know, I have all the riches and all, all the toys and their lifestyle or have be rich in love with my family and that was more important for me. Awesome. Mm. So you ended up uh, being housed down here through uh, cri- uh, crisis housing, didn't you? Yeah, so we, um, like I said, we were testing in our faith and uh, I'm thankful and blessed that I have a beautiful partner. We just prayed, we, like, we prayed a lot. And we, I believe truly, even right now, um, that God has a plan for each and every one of us. Amen. And you know, I just left it all up into His hands. And you know, within weeks, in, in our situation, we were placing a house down here. Um, I also was coming to a job down here. And so that so it looked was, like it was all coming together, eh? You, yeah. Lord was, had come through for you. You had a house, you had a job lined up. Yep. Yeah, and then. We got down here and the house was all good. And pretty much the day we moved in, I ran up to get my job to go and do my drug test because I was keen for that. I'll pass out any day. <laughs> um, and yeah, I got told that the job wasn't there anymore. Right. So you moved from where you were yeah. all the way down here to promise a job and that didn't come through for you, right? <coughs> so, uh, so what did you do? So we were tested again on our faith. And once again, we, we prayed. And I pretty much just was felt to go and door knock some, some companies. And the third job I door knocked, I got offered a full time job straight away. So oh, next day, which worked out heaps better for me and my family. And that's where you're still working. What kind of job is it? What do you do? So I drive log trucks. Okay. So I work for 60 minimum to 70 hours in five days. Okay. Um, no, so I said five days. I don't work on Saturday. I finished before five o'clock on a, on a Friday. And this is something that I made sure the day I went in to try and get a job that everyone, that they knew that. So you were, you were quite um, desperate for work. You, need, yeah. you needed to get a job. But, so you didn't take the approach of saying, well, I'm going to get a job. And then once they see how good I am, then I'll talk to them about the Sabbath. Yeah, well, the old me would have done that. Just talk to that to get the job. But nah, well, I was all about trying to be honest and stuff like that. And that's, that's just what I told them up front. And I knew God would provide, you know, if it was the place for me. Obviously, that last place wasn't where he wanted me to be. So he put me in this, in this job, and yeah, we've just been blessed ever since. So you had an interview with the owner operator, mm-hmm. and, uh, and you basically said to him, So I really want this job, but there is just this one thing on my side. I don't work Sabbaths to find a sunset Friday to to Sunset Saturday, mm-hmm. and uh, what was his response to that? Yeah, you know, he was he was keen as. Is, is he is he a Seventh Day Adventist? Is he, no, uh, definitely not. Is he a Christian? It, like no, like why was he so sympathetic? Uh, probably was sizing me. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I just honestly I I, I don't know. I, it was, might have been my keenness, but I was just telling him straight up in my honesty and and. and what I believe in and what I, what I keep. And just to be heart. clear, the company does operate on Sabbaths, yeah, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm pretty much the only one that doesn't, I don't do anything from that day for, especially for my company. Right, so the, um, 
This went well for a little while, and mm. uh, then uh, then something happened. Well, like most big companies these days, you have a health and safety person, and uh, they're trying to do everything by the book. And because our company makes most of its money Monday to Friday, uh, they try and have training days on a Saturday. So I was brought into the health and safety lady's office, and I uh, was pretty much told that on Saturday we have a health and safety meeting that you have to attend. Um, <coughs> Lucky for all that was in that room, my boss was there, the owner, and... Because it got a little intense, right? Oh, yeah. I started to get a bit of a sweat dripping down my brow, because I wanted to say some things. And um, my boss kind of hit the, hit the conversation on the head straight away. Because she was pretty intense with you. She, yeah, she brought She basically said, everything. she pulled up the contract yeah. and said, if you don't do this... She implied that you would be at risk of losing your job. Yes. Yeah. So, um, obviously she didn't know who she was talking to. And the boss pretty much told her, nah, he's, he's all good. He doesn't have to attend these things on Saturday. And if they want me to attend anything, they can do it during Monday to Friday. Wow. Yeah. Amen. Wow. That's awesome, isn't it? Yes, definitely. Yeah. We have one next week too, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so it's been a, it's been a real big journey for you. Hey, hey, uh, you've seen God come through. You've experienced some disappointment along the way, some upset plans haven't always worked out exactly like they should. But I like what you said. You you know when the crisis comes, the first thing you do is you go to the Lord and you Ooh. ask Him for His for His grace and for His help. Now now here's a question for you, though, Lee. If if it had come to it, what would you have chosen? The job or the Sabbath? Sabbath. Amen. Amen. Yeah, definitely. Praise the Lord. Because I, I truly believe that God, God will provide and He does provide. Amen. I've seen His blessings firsthand. Like, I was a total atheist two years ago. Yeah. Um, and if it wasn't for my, my in laws, my beautiful partner, and my support crew I had up with me up in Tacoma, and my beautiful church I started with up there, and the people, then, um, yeah, I wouldn't be standing here. I, I would be definitely. If not dead in jail or something like that, then... Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Now, um, <coughs> there's uh, some very special dates coming up for you soon, aren't there? Isn't there, Lee? Yes. You, you've used the word partner. Yeah. Oh, if, I, I call it wife. She's got to be my wife soon, anyway. So, <laughs> it's been 11 years, eh, baby? So, uh, yeah, November, uh, I think 15th. Is that right? <laughs> we're going to get that one right, <laughs> Yeah. Um, we're going to get married and dedicated and baptized all on the same day, pretty much. Yeah, the same week. Yeah, same right. week, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so Lee and Anna are, are going to be getting married, and then we're going to celebrate a fantastic baptism. Mm. And all sorts of family, I think, are coming. Now, this is a big deal for their families. You want to tell us why? <laughs> it's a big deal for my families. Um, well, I'll be the first of my family to be married. Um, I'm the only one that's walking with, with Jesus and Anna being the golden child, she's going to be first in her, going to be married and coming from my own little big Māori and Tongan family so they're making a big huge fuss about this. I tried to keep it small but you know, in laws they try to take over. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic, thank you Lee, appreciate you Thank sharing you. with us. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Big thank you to our uh, three interviewees. It was great to, to hear those stories. And part of the reason I wanted to share those with you uh, for our lesson study this morning is because, you know, it's one thing to think about the Sabbath being a test in the future. It's one thing to think about how the Sabbath is an outward symbol, a sign of our allegiance to the Creator God. It was there in the Garden of Eden before sin entered the world. The Sabbath was there with marriage, right? It was a gift to the entire human family through the human family's parents, Adam and Eve, to every culture, to every race, handed down from Adam and Eve. There was not a Jew in the Garden of Eden. It was just Adam and Eve and all of humanity built into their DNA, right? The Sabbath existed before the entrance of sin. It has nothing to do with sin or the ceremonial law or anything else. It is there at the beginning. And as long as God is the creator and we are his creation, that's how long the Sabbath will be enduring as a sign that we recognize Him as such. In a day and age that is evolutionary in its orientation, the Sabbath stands 
as a powerful sign and symbol that we are not evolutionists. We believe in an intelligent creator and designer. And then, of course, after sin, that passage we read in Ezekiel chapter 20 there and many others like it, the Sabbath takes on the symbolism of resting in Christ, doesn't it? Just such a fitting, just such a fitting symbol of salvation as well. And so no wonder that it carries right through in the book of Revelation to the end when it will be the external visible sign of differentiation. At this point in time, I can't say that it, that it stands as that final test just yet because the whole world hasn't yet been brought to a place where it's forced to decide between a man-made system and the divinely ordained and commanded system. But in the future, we know that it will. And the reason I wanted to share these stories and testimonies is to maybe rekindle a little bit of something inside of you. Because some of you have stories like this. Some of you uh, have counted the cost of discipleship and have chosen to be true to God and to His Word. Some of you have grown up in Seventh-day Adventist homes and, I don't know, maybe at some point in your life taken it for granted. It's just ordinary and it's normal. It's not. It's an incredible privilege to, to, to come into the presence of the Lord every Sabbath day in a unique way for worship and for fellowship. And I wanted you to hear these stories because it's one thing to talk about the Sabbath as a future test for the world. But it's a test right now. It's the symbol, the externally visible symbol that we stand under the banner of the Creator and the Saviour. And so I just hope and pray that as we think about what the future might bring, what the future will bring, that you will realize that every day we're practicing for that final test. Amen. That every day we're choosing to stand on the side of the Lord in the smallest decisions of life or to not stand with Him in the smallest compromises of life. Amen. And it may not seem like a big thing to give up a Sabbath here and there to attend a health and safety briefing at work or whatever the case may be. But we are growing our characters for time and for eternity. Amen. So may God bless you as you consider the, the, the privilege that we have as Seventh-day Adventists to worship every Sabbath day. Let me have a closing prayer with you. Father in heaven, we thank you for your love and your grace. We thank you for uh, giving us life. And on top of that, salvation, reconciliation, forgiveness. For giving us the promise of a certain future. And we look forward to that day. Until then, Lord, may we cherish every Sabbath day as a foretaste of that uh, divine reunion between you and us. May it remind us forgetful creatures because we desperately need the, the, um, the reminder, Lord. Make us stop. Make us listen. Make us connect. Recharge us for the week that lies ahead. We pray this in Jesus' name. All right, thank you, friends. We uh, are aiming to start again at 10 past 11, so that gives you 10 minutes to uh, say hello to the people next to you or go for a little walk to that little room and uh, just be back here by uh, 11, uh, 10 minutes past 11. Thank you. God bless.